Stroke back again. Today we're going to be talking about ODAG. You know that stuff that you, you keep hearing possibly in meetings, you're reading stuff about it online, and I know exactly what you're thinking because quite frankly I was there with you. Um, oh what? Like it doesn't make sense. Um, it, it, it's a really new concept and the acronym isn't so user friendly. What does this really mean? Well, I could say, hey, look, relax. It's, it's really on-demand application generation, to which you still might be thinking, oh, what? Because you're thinking you can't build applications on the fly. It's not like the mashup stuff where I've got other piece parts I'm pulling together. Like, there's no way you're building me a application literally on the fly. Um, so th there's still some confusion there. If you hit our help site um, and you looked for um, managing big data with on-demand apps, there's a whole bunch of narrative there um, that, that can walk you through some of this stuff. What I'm going to try to do is simplify this a little more than that even because I think pictures are worth a thousand words and demos after seeing pictures are worth like a gajillion words. Um, so let's, let's simplify this a little bit. Let's pretend that we've got Sally Sue sitting in her desk. She's just some business user in some department, some organization, some service line of our business. She's got a simple purpose in life. She wants to discover insights based on the data. And so the traditional approach is, hey, let's build her an analytics application. It's all in memory. Woohoo! Right? All the things that we love about Click and we've loved since 1993. All great. Sally Sue's a happy camper until doggone it, this whole big data thing. And these cloud data people are giving you the ability to store billions and billions or trillions of data. And they also give you the ability, which is I think is kind of cool, to like stream data in. Well, as soon as you do that, Sally Sue says, well, doggone, I want to get access to all that data. And we say, well, I can't, I, I can't put billions and billions and billions into memory. I can't put trillions into memory and doggone it, if I'm doing a refresh, I'm still at, at some point in time, if Sally Sue really needed that live data that could be streamed into Cloudera, oh, what do we do for her? Because she's going to be unhappy with our traditional approach to analytics. So that's where we came up with this on-demand application generation concept. Sally Stu still works with what we would call a base application. It lets her identify a cohort. She knows she needs to get to the real details of billions or trillions, but she doesn't need them all at the same time. I hope that makes sense. So, the base application would do pretty much what direct discovery does. If you've, if you've used that before, um, that's been around for an awful long time with ClickView. I've used that way in the past um, as a customer of Clicks as well. So it lets you pick the cohort. I'm going to narrow down what I want the details of. And those details may be live or may just be I want a subset of my trillions of rows that are in Cloudera that cohort gets passed to another existing app. I, it's, it's the details, it's this template app that's already built, but I'm basically saying, oh, Sally Sue identified a cohort. It now goes and runs this live and talks to Cloudera and says, ooh, here's the where clause that you need to populate your data. So the, the application shell is there, but on demand, we're generating the actual visualized version of the application, which is what we're trying to do there. So again, she works with a traditional app, all in memory. Everything's refreshed on whatever cycle you want. She selects some kind of a cohort. That cohort gets passed to this base application. It runs against Cloudera Live, pulls the data on demand, and then that shell is generated into a real application. A couple of real benefits to this kind of technology. Um, the base application still remains fast. Everything is in memory. We don't have to have 
trillions of rows of detail records if they don't really if users don't need to see those things in order to pick cohorts um, we've got a lot of flexibility because i might have two three five base applications that choose cohorts differently and still brings up that same template application couple of the great benefits of um, using the on-demand application generation for this template is I get all of the power of click that I get with any other application. I can still use section access so that I get row and column security. I can omit columns. Um, I still get to use the very powerful set analysis. And if you followed me for any length of time, I go back to set analysis a lot. Um, so those are some benefits. Now that's just talking about it. What I, what I like to do is go ahead and show this to you. Um, if you weren't aware of this already, we have a phenomenal demo site already built. This is something you can go to at any point in time. It's cloudera.click.com. On the demo site, we actually have a, a demo already that will demonstrate the on-demand um, application generation. So I'm going to launch this demo. It's going to come up and you're going to see that I've got basically this is my what I would call my base application and my details application is down here. And if I look at this, hey, there's no applications that have been generated yet. And when I'm back on this screen, you'll see that this circle is unfilled. What that's telling me is, hey, whoa, 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 there's a threshold that's been set, Sally Sue. For you to be able to see details, you need to identify more of a cohort. And so let's pick some business core. And let's pick a business line, let's say. As I'm making these selections, you see that this little pie is getting fuller. It's basically saying your cohort is kind of being narrowed down now. Uh, maybe I might want to pick the range of transactions. Um, and maybe I want to pick a few of these specific customer types. And so I, once I pick those, you'll see that this circle then fills up. It lets Sally Sue know she has now achieved a cohort small enough which is what under whatever threshold we want to set. That threshold is up to you, but it's based on, hey, based on our network speed or the speed of our Cloudera cluster, how much data do I want to bring back live, right? And so once I've done that, I can say, hey, let me go generate a new app. What it's doing now, as I showed you in the slides, is it's basically taking this cohort that says these are the accounts that should be used. It's building the where clause, it's putting that into the where clause in this details application that I can now go launch. And so on the fly, I've basically built this application. I can drill into all of these details as we would expect, right? I can now look at all of these different transactions and all of the details about them. And here's the beauty of this. Maybe this, th these aren't the ones I wanted to see. Maybe I really wanted to see this one and this one and this one, and I wanted to pick a different date range. And I wanna go with the whole year, I can now generate another one. I could choose the one I've already built, or I can say I want to generate a new one. And again, it's now calling that template. It's passing my cohort, that where selection clause that I need. And it's going to now build me a new version of the app. And so as soon as it completes this, I'm then able to open this version. And you'll see that what I have is basically these two different apps that I've built on demand, and it shows me different sets of data based on what it was that I asked for. I can get to the transactions. And so that, in a nutshell, 
is the crux of this. The nice thing is it will retain those. I can define how many versions to retain, how long I should retain them. But if I, if I had named this, I can now come right back to it The nice thing is I could come back to these and say, oh my gosh, I, I didn't mean to close that. I don't have to regenerate it each time. It saved that cohort and that version of the app. I can define how many of those versions I wish to save. I might want to let Sally Sue go five back. I might want to let her go 10 back. Um, or I may want to let her just do one or two at a time. It's just up to basically my server space. Um, and what I want to be able to deal with. That in, in a pretty simple nutshell is on-demand application generation. It lets Sally Sue choose a cohort, still work in a world of in-memory data to choose that cohort. But if, they, if Sally Sue needed access to hundreds of billions of rows, it goes and fetches the ones she needs at the time she's asking the questions. If some of what Sally Sue needs to make a legitimate decision is more live data than what would have been already queried on an hourly basis or a daily basis um, for certain things, it can be that live data as well. So hopefully as you see the term ODAG or you hear people talking about on-demand application generation, you now have a really, really clear picture of what that really means.